What science tells us at present, and uh, by the way, as someone said, 95% of the scientists who ever lived on this earth uh, are still alive, which means that most of the scientists who lived on this earth are still within the 70s and 80s of their age or less. But those who lived before then, very few of them actually developed uh, the process of scientific understanding of nature. It's a nice saying. Recently, which is 60, 70 years ago, they started to notice something called the red shift between planets when we study planets and astrology. And that gives them an idea of how two bodies in space go apart, separate, they are expanding. And from that came the theory of the expansion of the universe. So they said, oh, well, if the universe, all the part particles of it, which are these huge big planets and stars and galaxies and so on, are, are, are expanding and going far apart at a very high speed, by the way, but we can't see by our eyes, millions of light years as they count them, then probably we can reverse the videotape and go backwards, 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 until we reach the one point from where they all started. And they call this the point of singularity, a term coined by Stephen Hawking, who is a third in line scientist at Cambridge, where the first would be Isaac Newton, followed by Einstein and Stephen Hawking. That's how they think the man is great, although physically he's a very degenerated body, but a brain and a mind that weighs a million others. And he also had a word that if we one day discover uh, how the point of singularity started and it expanded, we would have reached the understanding of the mind of God. In other words, he is not against uh, God as well. And it is known that Einstein and Isaac Newton and most of the scientists, they believed in God in their own way, whether within a certain uh, um, conventional faith and religion, or at least that there is an intelligence that controls everything, that brought everything to be. From that understanding that there was a point of singularity, and before that we don't really know what was there, they worked it out mathematically as well, that yes, if things are expanding this way, so mathematical calculation would tell us that the point of singularity was, and now the answer to this question is how long? About 15 billion years. 40, 50 years ago, they were saying the figures that I read when I was a teenager between 10 and 100 billion of years. Now they worked it more accurately and it's around 15 billion years. Our Earth appeared 4.6 billion years ago. So it's much younger. Life started on this Earth between 2.5 to 3 billion years ago. But the fastest bit of the evolution occurred in the last half to 1 billion years. And man only came on this, or appeared uh, as a conscious being on this earth about four million years ago only. The, the, the very early appearances of something that is becoming man, which is the intelligent man as we are now. That's why I don't expect in your lifetime, or in a thousand, or ten, or fifteen, or twenty, hundred thousands, that you will see a big change in mankind. Although we know that, for example, the... Uh, average life expectancy for uh, people living in developed countries have risen. And at the time of the Pharaohs, the average life expectancy was 30, 40 years. They rarely lived beyond that because of many diseases that destroy them. This is, of course, environmental, but there are also changes in the height. For example, comparing the Scandinavians living in the 20th century with Scandinavians of the two centuries before, they say that the average height has increased. So these very minor increases may happen in many thousands. But to see a species developing, you are talking about millions of years or tens or hundreds of millions of years. So don't question. So scientists tell us how things came to be, but they do not have answers about how things originated from nothingness and the next step which is very difficult to understand yet although it is understandable and it can be 
uh, found and discovered scientifically by study is how the first atoms, say the hydrogen that became helium and became more complex types of elements, and there are more than a hundred in the periodic table now, as I remember, how out of these elements they join together to form compounds and under certain conditions of the earth at the early time in the first two billion years of the uh, life of earth there was no oxygen by the way it only started in the last two billion years to have oxygen when plants started to produce it but before that it was more of a methane heat pressure etc and that could have as the assumption says allow these inorganic materials to join together according to the law of nature which I as a Christian believe God put in that nature because nature is not more intelligent than us we understand nature therefore if I believe that everything came by chance I'm actually attributing the intelligence of what we say is God to matter and therefore matter is my new God and I worship it because it's more intelligent than me I don't think anybody accepts that or accepts the idea of things coming by chance. There are laws and laws dictate the presence of intelligence and intelligence either in matter or outside matter, take it as you wish. Of course the atheists say intelligence is nothing but a natural law that came somehow, they don't want to say how but they, they in, imply that it is by chance but not by an intelligence outside matter. And that's how everything evolved. For me as a Christian that intelligence belongs to a nature which I call God, who is the creator of everything, who is the master, the engineer, the programmer, if you want, who made everything work through the laws that he put in nature. So these laws took the small atoms and helped them to develop from the inorganic matter to organic matter. Once you have organic matter, and that cannot happen by chance, and that is scientifically studied. To have the inorganic becoming organic, it's a huge step that can never happen by chance. Now to take the organic, which is the very simple proteins or amino acids forming the proteins, the building bricks of proteins, and then from proteins you start to have intelligence within a group of proteins together, which becomes the nucleus and the DNA and the chromosomes containing the genes, and when the cell divides, each one has the same sort of intelligent brain inside it to become the most primitive animals. All that cannot come by chance, it comes by natural law. Now, once there is law, there is intelligence. So we come and speak to people like Richard Dawkins who tries to say, Darwin gave us the answer to everything. We just have to discover the bits and pieces of the, uh, how A became B, B became C and so on, and we've discovered everything. No, sir. No, sir. Richard Dawkins tried to understand that you are skipping two most important points. The first point is how nothingness became something 15 billion years ago. And how the natural law evolved that it can change the inorganic to organic to all these creatures and why did it go into that line if it was not a law and intelligence then it, it it must be chance so we have to stop there with Richard Dawkins and people like him and say you have to give me an answer how did it all begin what are these natural law and where is that intelligence and if you say it is in matter well, you are talking religion now, isn't it? You are not talk, you are talking faith and you believe that. Uh, by the way, most medical publications and scientific papers, after they study the method of the study or the research, they start at the conclusion saying, therefore, we, the authors of this research or this paper, believe that. And even in the best medical papers and scientific papers, you have the allowance of 1 in 20 of error. We call this the p-value of 0 0.05, which means the the, there is a possibility always of at least 1 in 20 of our conclusions being wrong, but we are going to accept it as reasonably correct because of the 95%. Again, I believe this is a bit of faith, religious attitude, metaphysics rather than science. But let's continue with science and we will understand. So science tells us from this inorganic came the organic and the organic developed into unicellular organisms that divided and then they evolved after a long time when the tree stem you see it takes a long time to grow and then it starts to branch and branch faster as it goes up came the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom and that evolved into lots of animals as we saw in that tree and we are the top of this animal kingdom as a conscious being does this mean that God had nothing to do with my intelligence and the story in the Bible is wrong we will discuss this in the next clip